Great story. I needed this today. Thank you. David would be proud. So thank you very much. I got a bunch of really kind comments like this. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit more about my friend David Bellini, the uh, Italian screenwriter. So, so here we are fighting for screen time. We're on, uh, on the set of CBS Radford Studio. So this is the back lot. This is New York Street. And uh, these are all fake buildings. They're facades. And if you were ever to watch like an episode of Seinfeld and they do an exterior shot, it, it was shot here. They shoot a ton of sitcom stuff here. Uh, the lagoon from Gilligan's Island used to be here. And you could see it. And then they paved it over to make a pro uh, parking lot because of progress. Anyway, so at the beginning of his cancer treatment, you know, I'd call him and he was like horribly nauseous. I was like, oh man, let me get you some ginger ale. He's like, no, amico, no, because you know, my, my doctor, he, he won't, he doesn't want me to have ale. I'm like, ale, like, dude, there's no alcohol in ginger ale. It's just, this is a American false advertising. There's no alcohol. Let me go get you some, it'll help you. So I go to Trader Joe's and you gotta get, you gotta get the good uh, ginger ale to help with, no, there has to be ginger in it. A lot of ginger ale doesn't even, doesn't have ginger or ginger in it. So I, I go to Trader Joe's, I get the good stuff, but they only have a six pack. So I find a clerk and I was like, listen, uh, do you have any more of this in the back? And she goes, yeah, I think we do. How much do you need? And I was like, I need all of it. Just give me all of it. And then it was weird. She just, she just like looked at me and her face kind of dropped. And then she said, my sister had cancer. And like in that moment, strangers, we're just strangers. And we're feeling the same exact thing. And we're just like hugging each other with our eyes. So I get the ginger ale and I'm driving it to my friend's apartment. And all the time I'm thinking, man, I got, this is going to be funny. I'm going to give him so too much ginger ale. I'm going to give him so much ginger ale. It's going to be annoying. He's like, where do I put all this? Well, this is your problem, buddy. I, I, not my fault, your fault. So I get to his apartment. I'm thinking we're all going to laugh about this. You know, the door's open because they're expecting me there. And I go inside and he's nowhere to be seen. He's, he's in the bathroom. He's just throwing his guts up. He's just throwing up. He couldn't even come out to say hi. So I just leave it there. A few months later, he was in at City of Hope. They, you know, I couldn't visit him for the first month or two because he was getting so much treatment. You know, he was in no space to get visitors. When he was finally okay, his wife sends me an email. She's like, "Yeah, you can come visit, but you should know, uh, he he looks different because of all the chemo and the radiation and the steroids. You should just know that you know he he's going to look different." So I'm like, "Okay, good." So I get to City of Hope, big parking lot, huge, and it's, it's blazing hot that day. But I decide I'm going to park all the way at the end of the parking lot to give me time, even though there's spaces up front, just to give me time to get my head together so that I can just, pre you know, prepare myself mentally so that when I see him, you know, it's all just, it's business as usual. I don't want him to feel self-conscious about how he looks, right? So I'm preparing myself. I get to the room, walk in the room, and his mother's there. She greets me. She's in sitting in a chair. She gets up. Oh, Michael. She gives me a big hug. I, I hadn't met her at this point yet. But, you know, she's very friendly. She, oh, Michael, she's happy to see me. Come sit down. Sit, sit. She offers me her chair. Right now, I'm not going to take her chair. What, come on. I'm, I'm going to stand up. I'm, I'm, no way am I going to take her chair. I say hi to her father, his father. Right. He's over there. I meet him. You know, piacere. Give him a handshake. And then I look at the bed and there's this like 80 year old man in the bed. And I'm thinking, I, I guess he's sharing a room. I, you know, what, well, I guess my friend's sharing a room. And then it realized that, that was him. That was him, man. And my legs just give out, right? And now I'm, I grab her chair. I'm like, I need, to, I, I'm sitting this. I need to sit in this, or else it was that or fall to the ground. And I took her chair. You know, and she. It's funny now that I think about it. You know, because she, she, she welcomed me as if she was in. This is her home. Come on in, take a chair, right? And it was her home. Anywhere your only child, your only your only child is dying. That's your home. That's that's home now. So, um, sorry, I needed a minute there. So, I'm hanging out with him, and I'm smiling. We're just chatting. I'm trying to keep it light. About a half hour later, they come for him. They have to wheel him for another treatment. I don't know what the hell they're taking him to. So they wheel him out. As soon as he gets out the door, I just lost it. I'm sobbing in the arms of his mom and his dad. I'm just sobbing. They're strangers to me. I'm sobbing. I just lost it. Drive home, blazing hot. And when I get home, I just start writing because, like, what else are you going to do with all this grief? 
I had to get it off me. I just started writing. Around the same time, my daughter was graduating high school and all my you know, friends on Facebook, they're posting pictures of their kids, same age, graduating high school. Everyone's happy, everyone's happy. And I'm at, well, we're at the, you know, the graduation ceremony and it's fun, it's light. And the minute it was over, I just lost it with my wife. I'm, I'm sobbing in her arms, everything's just too much. We're crying, I don't even know how long, crying in each other's arms. Finally, we look up, the place is empty, the auditorium, the theater is empty. And so I get home and I start writing about that. And then I'm like, I'm like, what do I do with this? So I was like, well, maybe I'll, I'll share it on my Facebook page. Like all my other friends are sharing happy pictures, but that wasn't my experience. It was something different than happiness. So I, I wrote this thing. It was not even a story. It was like a couple of pages. I put it on Facebook and I'm, and I'm reluctant the whole time because I'm thinking, eh, it seems so very self-indulgent. It seems like, eh, look at me. I'm talking about me. Let's talk about me some more. But I put it up anyway. And then a couple minutes later, the comments come flooding in, like the comments, the kind things that you guys left on my last video, just nice things that people are saying, thank you, thank you. And then I would say to my wife, well, you know, they're just being polite. You know, they have to say thank you. What else are they gonna say? And she's like, no, they're not being polite. They mean it. Thank, they're thanking you because you're saying how they feel, but they just, they just can't, they don't have the words. They don't wanna say it for whatever reason. They don't wanna go public with it. They'd rather post a picture of it than everyone smiling, but they're all feeling the same damn thing. And you're just the one who's saying it. And so I thought, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe this isn't as self-indulgent as I thought it was. And I started writing more stories and more stories. And they were just little moments. And that's what came to collect. That's what my book became, A Paper Orchestra, which was the premise is what if the smallest, almost forgotten moments were the ones that shaped us most? And I'm talking about moments like, you know, seeing a stranger in Trader Joe's and just feeling the same grief. Moments where you have to take someone's chair because you can't stand up. So that was the book, right? Um, yeah, that's what a paper orchestra is. It's just people are like, well, what is it? Well, that's what it is, really. And then I started performing it. Uh, uh, not a lot, just a little bit and touring a little bit with it. And I'd get the same reactions from people. You know, thank you. And I'm like, yeah, they're just being polite. No, my wife's like, they're not being polite. They're not being polite. So that's what my book is. Uh, it'll drop either summer or, or fall. Uh, if you're on this app, you can hit, you can hit sign up and it'll, you can sign up. I can send you information when it drops and hopefully you'll, you'll enjoy it. Uh, you'll laugh at first. I'm sure you'll laugh at most of these stories. And then at some point, like maybe people, maybe people have pointed out, like, I didn't see that coming because it just turns because that's what life is. You're not supposed to see any of this thing, any of it coming. I didn't see it coming when I went to his, uh, my friend's hospital room. I didn't see that coming. I was prepared. I was mentally prepared to see a different person. And I was, didn't see that coming, fell to my, my knees. And so that's what, the, that's what the book is. That's what the show is. I'll, I'll start touring with it more. And if you'd like to come, I'd love to see you there. For more information, you know, click the sign up or you can go to this link here and sign up and learn a little bit more about the book and the show. Thank you.